Guys, what's going on? Welcome to Serial at Midnight. My name is Heath, and thank you for joining us here on our moon base. Moon base midnight? Is that taken? Can I use that? I'm going to use moon base midnight. Uh, we're going to do more collecting talk in this, in this episode. You know, I recently posted a video on this channel about running out of room. The collection has just become so... Now it's not here. We're on the moon, right? But the collection has just taken up so much of the house. The response to that video was huge. And it reminded me that so many of us are on the same page. We're dealing with these challenges at the same time together. But one of the things I wasn't expecting is that multiple people commented on that video and said uh, something to the effect of, like, I hope to have that problem in the future. Wow, that's a great collection. How do you build the collection to be that big? That sort of thing like quantity right like the it's an impressive thing and I, I understand this is not an accident that i shoot in the videos in front of my movie collection when i'm not on the moon at moon base midnight uh hashtag moon base midnight trademark zero at midnight i don't know um but here's the thing like it didn't just happen it, it this is my collection is the culmination of three decades worth of film fandom like being an active buyer of the movies that i want to see it didn't just happen. It wasn't like, well, I went out and I bought 200 movies and blah, blah, blah. Uh, it was a slow, year-by-year, -year, gradual growth thing. And then, of course, we also have to remember I'm in a very privileged position where I am a reviewer and a and a C-word. It's the C-word. I'm not going to say it. We're not the one. No, not that one. The other one. I'm talking about the critic. That's the, that's the word we're not supposed to say because people hate those guys. But... I get the opportunity to tell you what I think about things and to spread the word about new releases. So a lot of times that's where I choose to put my energy because I take it, here's the thing, I take it very seriously. I want you to know what I think about something and if I think it's worth your money. So most of the energy goes into that, right? This channel is basically like, hey, this came out, here's what I think about it, here's what's included, so you know. So you can make a good decision about what you wanna add to your collection. But we gotta have more conversations about the collecting aspect too, right? Because there's a lot of YouTube channels out there, I see them, I've talked about some of this stuff before on the channel. I remember watching a YouTube channel about how to build a collection. It was basically like, how to have an instant physical media collection, or have, have an instant movie collection, and this, this guy was advocating for you to just buy massive lots of movies on eBay, you know, big lots, because now is the time to do it, right? Because uh, all those common movies, everything that's, you know, that's not, everything that got pressed in 50,000 batches or higher, you know, they're like a dollar or two dollars or three dollars or something like that. So this is the time to pick them up. You can pick up massive lots of movies for lower than you've ever been able to buy them before. Um, and this guy was like, just buy a bunch of movies and then you can keep the ones you're interested in, but they look really good on the shelves and it looks like you've got a massive collection. And this, like, I was like, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Then you have a collection that does not reflect you. It does not reflect your interests, your passion. It is meaningless to you. You have literally just bought stuff. You have bought clutter. I'm clenching my fist. You've bought clutter. You melon farmer, yippee ki yay melon farmer. Who gets that reference? TV cut of Die Hard, yippee ki yay melon farmer. Uh, not to be confused with Charles Bronson and Mr. Majestic, who is an actual melon farmer. Anyway, I see a lot of accumulation over passion, especially on YouTube, because of course, let's be honest, selling things like, look what I bought. Those videos always perform better than anything else. If I do an interview, I have a joke behind the scenes. I'm going to let you guys, like, here's, this is, I'm being honest. If I interviewed Steven Spielberg, I feel like that video would get less views than if I did a collection video about Steven Spielberg movies on disc. That's where things are with YouTube. Like, I don't want to hear you talk about the stuff. Don't talk about what's on the disc. Don't you dare analyze this art. I want to know about buying it. Show me where I can go get it. Show me what it all looks like together. That makes me sad because that's like, that's cart before the horse stuff. Forest for the trees. What's another, <laughs> an old time saying for what we're talking about. Yeah, collect what you love, right? It's just stuff. Now that doesn't mean collect only movies. I, I don't want, I want to be clear about this too. Cause like, right. I'm a reviewer. I'm, I'm the C word. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that comes in that maybe I don't love, but I get to talk about it. I don't know if I love it yet. Right. There's a, we're living in the time. Here's, here's a fact. There is more coming out 
physical media wise, Blu-rays, DVDs, 4Ks, all that stuff. There's more coming out than has ever come out in the history of the home media business. It's more than the VHS days. It is more than ever before. Now people go into Target and they go, well, there's only two aisles of me. I think it's one aisle of media, mine now. Uh, they go to Target and they're like, well, there's only one aisle of media. This is dying. It's not. There's more coming out than ever before. There are dozens and dozens and dozens of releases every single week. Now, they're not showing up in Target because Target can't, they're not going to be able to sell all that stuff. We're talking about niche stuff. We're talking about Shelf Factory. Uh, we're talking about MVD. We're talking about, you know, all the third party distributors, all the boutique labels, all that stuff. That's not going to a store. That's going straight to the consumer through the internet, through their storefronts, blah, blah, blah. So, more than ever before. Um, which means that we have choices to make, right? So I don't say like, don't blind buy anything. Cause if you know the kind of things that you like, you know, these Kino Lorber sales are insane. Movies for 10 bucks, movies for $7.99. Sometimes they go to like $5.99. Uh, if you think you're interested in a particular actor or, you know, like this is the time to check it out. I don't mind blind buying. In fact, I advocate blind buying because you if you only watch movies that you love and you only buy movies that you love, well, most movies are not on streaming. The rental stores are dead. So how are you going to discover new things? If you can pick something up for five bucks or eight bucks or whatever, go for it. But if you don't like it, don't hold on to it just because it looks good on a shelf. Hold on to it because you, you know, hold on to what you love. Collect what you love. Your collection should be a representation of you, of the things that you care about. You know, when someone... In the in a Marie Kondo world where you know your walls are just supposed to be white and bare, uh, there used to be a time not that long ago when your collections and what you had in your living spaces were a reflection of you. People could come in, they could look at your movies, they could look at your books, they could look at your you know whatever your action figure collections or your posters or whatever, and they knew they had a good sense of who you were and what you cared about. Uh, we're getting further and further away from that as younger generations want to declutter everything. Decluttering is important. That's what that whole video about running out of space was about. I got too much clutter. I got too many things that I don't want. I let the passion, the, I just kind of snoozed on getting rid of the, some of the stuff that I didn't want to hang on to. Uh, but I want to hold on to the things that I care about because it's a reflection of who I am. But remember, it's just stuff. You guys remember that bumper sticker? So there was a bumper sticker. It was like, he who dies with the most toys still dies. It was back in the no fear days. It was probably like 1998 or something like that. Uh, but it was a bumper sticker. He who dies with the most toys. Because there's a, there's a phrase, right? He who dies with the most toys wins, which is ridiculous uh, and so untrue. When you die, you're dead. I, you know, I'm a huge Elvis fan. Uh, I think a lot of you guys know that. I love Elvis. You go to Graceland or Graceland, however you want to pronounce it. You go to Graceland. It's this very reverential experience for me. You go through the house, you see the jungle room, you go through, you know, the garage or whatever. There's all this stuff. There's this hall full of gold records. I mean, it's just the walls are lined with gold records. There's the suits and the jumpsuits and the outfits. There's so much stuff in the house, musical equipment, pianos, whatever, recording equipment. There's just so much stuff in the house. And then you walk through this and it's like, wow, look at the success of Elvis. And then you come out and there you are in this little courtyard and there's the grave of Elvis. And it could not be more poignant to me that you walk through the halls of accolades and awards and you end with a hole in the ground. And that's where we're all going, you guys. You cannot take it with you. So if it's not bringing you joy, you got to cut it away. You know what I'm saying? So... Collecting is wonderful. We are, I think we are wired for that just as human beings. Some of us take it further than others. Uh, there is definitely some sort of an OCD component built into, I think, a lot of us. Uh, I know for myself, the completest mentality. Like, I well, I got to have, you know, like, oh, now I'm doing, I have 60% of all of Burt Reynolds' movies. Got to get 100. Like, they're just wired this way, right? But we got to do what's best for us and we have to remember that a collection should be a representation of what we care about, what we're interested in. You can't build a collection overnight. It takes time. For me, it took decades. Uh, and at the end of the day, if I'm not pruning it and I'm not curating it, it doesn't really mean much because it's not a reflection of who I am. It's just stuff. So hopefully that is an encouraging conversation. Uh, and, uh, again, we'll try to do these conversations from time to time because you know, I've said all this stuff in the past. We got, 
you know, close to like a thousand videos. I think we're 800 and something videos at this point in the game. Um, I need to say it more often. I need to come back and hit these points over and over again. Because especially as I get older and I evolve and, and you guys too, uh, it's important to keep having these conversations. So I'll say this. Uh, in the continued effort to declutter the Serial of Midnight collection, more and more stuff is going on eBay. If you buy something through eBay, uh, it's eBay user Serial at Midnight. Um, you are helping this channel. It goes directly back into the channel because I am a full-time YouTuber. Uh, I'm not working another job. This I do these videos. This is not a hobby for me. This is my job. This is my career. This is every day, six to seven days a week, 10 to 12 hours a day. It takes a lot of work to run a YouTube channel. So that's a way to support. You can also support through our Patreon page. Uh, we really take care of our patrons. There are over a hundred exclusive videos. People go, hey, you do room tours, you do collection tours. We do, but those are our gifts to patrons. Uh, we have about 10 hours of collection tours on Patreon. Uh, 25 episodes of Collecting at Midnight, which is all the collects. So like, hey, look what I bought. It's not, hey, look what I got sent to review. It's, hey, look what I bought. That's all on Patreon. We did breeded a series of cooking videos. Um, I mean, there's just all kinds of stuff. We really have, like, it's, it's, it's so much fun. Like, I'm so proud of what we've been able to do over on Patreon. There's an exclusive Facebook group just for our top, you know, our top level is $7, right? My goal with our Patreon campaign was to say, like, it's low enough that everybody can come and have fun. And if everybody is chipping in seven bucks or, you know, that we got $7 tier, $5 tier, but top level is seven bucks. So it's like, if everybody could kick, you know, kick in seven bucks, I'm doing, you know, I'm able to create full time. Uh, it's not, it's like a, that's an extra, that's a, that's a McDonald's combo meal, right? So, uh, trying to keep it so everybody can contribute and everybody can be a part of this. But thank you for watching this video. If I, you know, I don't do this very often, but if you do, like, please, you know, promote the videos, give them those likes. I heard, I heard they're taking the likes away. I don't know if that's. I think maybe they reverse that. They're like, we're taking the likes away, and they're like, oh, okay, we'll bring it back. Uh, and also, please subscribe. A lot of you guys are watching these videos, but you're not subscribing. One more thing I'm going to say is if you do like this channel and you're watching the videos that are suggested to you, dig into our playlist, go to our homepage on YouTube, go to YouTube, you know, you know, you click on the little, uh, the little icon there, the serial at minute icon and look at our playlist because YouTube is only going to suggest more of what you've already been watching. You got to check out the interviews. You got to check out the cool places we've been to like Metropolis, Illinois, or, uh, the interviews I do. Like I interviewed Ron Dante, the voice of the Archies. And, uh, I mean, so Sugar, sugar. Like I talked to Ron Dante. I don't want that stuff to slip through the cracks just because we're talking about, oh, what movie? I like to collect movies. You know, there's oh, there's so much stuff out there here at Serial at Midnight. Guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you very much. Take care until next time. Here's where to go and what to do.